Welcome back, everybody. This is Level Up, going from agent to entrepreneur. Greg Harrelson is back. We are uh, we are in the driver's seat together. We're going to talk about the market shifting and, and what you mean by that. So first of all, Greg, welcome back from uh, our extended time of not recording together. Yeah, man, I'm excited about it. You know, um, I, I always love the you, you, you. I know you're going to challenge me, so I like look. I, it's like, all right, I'm ready. You know, I I, I kind of pump myself up before I get on a call with you. I was going to say people should go listen to the episode that we just recorded, which was on extraordinary results, because I did ask you a question yeah. that you've never heard before. That's right. In yeah. your many years in real estate, which I love and take great satisfaction in, so yeah. people should go check that out. Um, okay, so I mentioned in the last episode that this particular insight that you're about to share comes from the fact that you are in in the bullpen you are talking to homeowners every day you're coaching all of your agents every day you know the conversations that are happening because you're uh, essentially one of the only real estate coaches broker owners that i know of that's so intimately involved with the agents and is so in touch with the on the ground communication that's happening with the consumer that you can see these kind of subtle shifts and that's what you were talking about we're not talking about an up and down shift we're not talking about you know prices are going up or down or anything like that so when you say that yeah. the market has shifted what do you mean by that yeah so you know uh, if, and 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 when i say it i mean i i really believe that it's already shifted okay and um, again when, when we look up the definition of shift all of it all, all, shift really means it's just a slight movement right. okay it doesn't mean the market's crashing the, it's good it's getting better it's getting worse so the term shift though I think in the real estate industry, we hear that term, we, we interpret that term as crash um, a lot of times. So that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm really talking about is the shift in the conversations that's occurring right now between buyers and agents and sellers and agents. Mm -hmm. So if we go backwards, Matt, a couple months ago, let's just say two months ago, um, the buyers calling the agent like, hey, did you see that new one that just came on the market? I was just on Zillow and I saw that new listing. Uh, can we see it? Can we see it? And, um, and the agent's like, oh, let me check. Let me check. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Um, yes, they go and see it real quick. All right, well, let's make an offer. Um, how much do you think I should offer? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's going to sell for full price. How much over full price should we go? Should we remove the contingency of the appraisal and the inspection? Like that's the buyer asking those questions of the agent <laughs> two months ago. Okay. Today, the buyer is not calling the agent and saying, hey, did you see that new one that just hit Zillow? The agent's calling the buyer and say, hey, did you see that one that just hit the market? Oh, no, mm. I didn't get a chance to look at it. Oh, okay, yeah, you need to look at it. Let me send you a link. Do you want to buy this or do you want to look at this one? Mm -hmm. We need to get in there fast. Mm -hmm. Well, agents, and then the the buyer's like, yeah, okay, we can come look at it, and they go look at it, and it's and it's a great property. And the buyer says, you know, is there any offers on this yet? Because I really don't want to be involved in those multiple offers, and right. you know, um, you know, I I I'm 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 not in a hurry. I mean, I can I don't have to buy it right now, so I can kind of wait. But by, by the way, what do you think's going to happen to the market over the you know in the next six months? Mm -hmm. That's the dialogue of the buyer. Okay totally shifted from the way it was like the buyer was trying to win the multiple offer scenario two months ago. Mm -hmm. The buyer starting to question whether or not winning is actually really losing. Yeah. Totally different. That's a shift, okay. slight movement in conversation. Now on the, mm -hmm. on the flip side, you got a seller, you got a seller that's been watching their neighbors break sales records over and over again, for their homes and these this owners watching all these sales and can't believe it's happening. Yeah. And over time, they're like, you know what? I don't even want to sell, but if I can get that price, then let's list it. I don't even, we'll, we'll just rent something for a little by, by while. So they're calling a real estate agent or an agent's calling them and it's going on the market. And the seller is a little bit overconfident. They kind mm -hmm. of have some unrealistic expectations, but they don't really care if it sells. They're like, if I can get it, I can get it, which means they tend to like push the limits on pricing. Mm -hmm. So there's the shift in both conversations. So what I find fascinating, though, is the buyers are starting to use a little bit more logic in their approach to buying. Mm -hmm. And the sellers are using a little bit more emotion in their approach to selling. In a normal market, sellers sell off logic, buyers buy off emotion. 
buyers are being more logical saying, you know, I don't think I should rush into this right this second. Let me think about this for a moment. That's the shift. Now Mm -hmm. you, each one of us will have to determine what, what is that an early indicator of? Because in my opinion, there's, we know there's early indicators and lagging indicators. Mm -hmm. A lagging indicator would be past sales that have already closed. That's a lagging indicator. We can, we can look at what happened to the most recent past and we could use that to predict the future. Mm-hmm. Then you got leading indicators. Leading indicators could be, wow, there's more listings coming on the market that the absorption rate is going from one month of inventory to three months of inventory. Mm-hmm. And then you can make, you could speculate that increased inventory could be a softening in prices. That's not a guarantee, but one could use that leading indicator to come to that interpretation. Mm-hmm. Now there's what I call really extreme leading indicators. And that mm-hmm. is when the conversation right. amongst buyers and sellers start to shift, that's a really early, early, early indicator that something else may follow. I'm going to leave it up to each individual agent to make their own predictions because I don't want to be making predictions so aggressively about where the market's heading. I do not think we're heading for a crash, but I'm listening to the most extreme early indicator. And you said this early on the, in in the recording, Matt, I, I'm still at the ground level. I mean, I take 10 to 15 uh, listings every month still today as I'm working and developing agents within my, my operations. So I'm not just like, kind of like on the, uh, you know, uh, 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 detached from the market. I'm in the market. I'm Mm -hmm. hearing these conversations left and right every single day. And I can tell you the conversation has shifted. And Mm -hmm. that is an extreme leading indicator. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Well, you've given me some. This is part of why I like doing the podcast with you because you give me some stuff to think about that I'm gonna have to chew on later. I'm gonna have to think about what my own, in in my own business, what the extreme leading indicators are. Uh, But yes, I 100% agree. We don't know exactly where this is heading, and I wouldn't make any predictions either because I all of my predictions about what real estate would have done during 2020 would have been so far off. Oh, me too. Me too. I thought the opposite. Can I? Um, can I? Can I do? I want to share one more thing real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. I will, I, I know this is a fact, 100% fact for my Myrtle Beach market. It was really about a month and a half ago that we started, I started, we started noticing a shift in the dialogue. This is a fact. I looked at numbers today. I look at them every Wednesday and every Wednesday, for the past four Wednesdays, the ratio between total inventory in the MLS to total inventory pending, that means all listings, what percent were pending? Mm-hmm. In the single family market in my, in, in my area, single family homes market, for resales, it was around 68% four weeks ago. It's 58% now. In new construction, it was like 81%. It's 74% right now. And in every single product type, the ratio between total listings and listings pending have actually decreased. Mm -hmm. Now, none of that has showed up in in closings yet because they have not, not enough time. And, and, and this is not an, a big enough sampling of time for me to start declare, to, to declare that the market is, is, is crashing. But I do know for a fact that one and a half months ago, I started saying there's a shift in the conversations. And in the past four weeks, we actually see a shift in the numbers. That's interesting. Okay. Now, so again, here's... I have to be paying attention every week to notice this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm, yeah. I, I, you can tell. Uh, yeah. I mean, just the fact that you have that that built into your calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, if I if I were in your position, I'd have that. But that most people don't are not as rigorously disciplined about that, just to kind of build it into the system of their week, which they absolutely should do. Um, now, on the as an on the ground level agent, how do we adjust? 
our conversations we're having with the consumer, knowing that their conversation is shifting. Any, any tips yeah. on that? Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and one reason I, I smirk at that, because yesterday my coaching call with the company, the title of the coaching, comp- uh, of the coaching call was, don't freak out. <laughs> that was the title. Don't freak out. <laughs> You would, I, 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 yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> That's just, that was private coaching for my company, so that didn't go out to the, yeah. the internet space. But the title was Don't Freak Out. And what I meant by that is, like, the tendency is to try to go into sales mode. And the buyer is sitting here saying, you know what, I think we, you know, I got a little bit of time. Uh, and then we end up going into, well, you know what, you better do this because the interest rates are really low. God, they've been hearing that for five years now. But the interest rates are really low and you could miss in the property values and the next inventory. Like we go into that too fast or we say to the seller, well, you know what, you better be realistic and you better do this. We're always trying to like in a shift when they shift the conversation, the agent's tendency is to try to get them to shift back. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't try to get them to shift back that conversation too quickly. What you want to do is you want to say, you know, Matt, uh, first, let me just say this, Matt. I, I really want to say thank you for being so transparent and letting me know kind of what you're seeing, how you're feeling about the market right now. And, and quite frankly, if I was a buyer in the market right now, going through what we've had to go through over the last six months, I, I might actually come to the same conclusion. It's critical to use that type of script mm. so they don't feel that you're going to then try to go change their mind as if they're wrong and I'm going to make them right. Don't do that. They will take a harder position on their belief if they feel like you're trying to change their position. So that's why I say to agents, don't freak out. Like when they say this, respond like this. And then you can say, you know what? You're not the only buyer that's thinking like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I've been thinking about this myself. And, and making sure that I provide the best value and service to you. You know, what I see as a few options is boom, boom. And then I start just going into whatever my suggestions are. Mm-hmm. That's the adjustment. See, when I say there's been a shift has already occurred, it's a shift in the conversation that they're having, which then requires us to shift our conversation. Mm-hmm. And the shift that we need to make is subtle but it, be careful. Don't shift into trying to prove them that they're wrong and here's the right way to do it. Shift to accepting them. If you want to influence them, then you got to first agree with them. Mm-hmm. And then you got to first be with them, meet them where they are. And then once they, it's established that you've met them where they are, then you can lead them where you are. Where most agents make the mistake is we try to we try to push them or pull them to where we are real quick and we haven't met them where, where they are and there's a complete disconnect and during this part of the shift that I'm talking about you will lose a lot of business. That's my con- yeah. that's the don't freak out coaching call that I had yesterday with my agents. That's interesting. Yeah, I can see I can see a couple groups of people having having trouble with that number one would be the just the high d drivers like let's you know like the, they're so focused on just the mechanics of getting the deal done that the, the the people emotionally part is kind of an inconvenience you have to like slow down and force yourself to acknowledge agree and then influence uh and then the others are those that i think are trying to show to show their value uh, that can also be a temptation yeah. to just kind of jump in and, oh, like, a, and, and try to be valuable by sharing your perspective on what you think the market is right now. And yeah, you just have to realize that doesn't matter. What matters more is what they think is going on, what they've heard from Sally and Johnny that, that are neighbors of theirs and like that. That's yeah. just that you have to realize that's where their perceptions are formed. And yeah, if you come at it, regardless of your intention, if you come at it with the intent to change their mind right off the bat, humans pick that up. We, we're just, yeah. we're intuitive and we don't like it. So all right, there's yeah. a bunch more we could say about that if we had the time, but I wanted to make sure we got down to some practical nuts and bolts, which we did, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So you mentioned something in the last episode, which you've never said before, uh, which yeah. apparently you have a group coaching program that you just launched. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, I've had so many requests to do like one-on-one coaching. It's just, it, quite yeah. frankly, that's just not it's just not, it's not where my passion is. I am, I do have a passion for developing talent and yes, that's probably why I put out so much content. I, you know, uh, I put out so much free content for years and people are always confused as to why I did that. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, I've attracted some great agents to my office because I've done that. So I, yeah. I've, I've been rewarded by, by, by doing that in the marketplace. Um, 
but you know, I just, you know, it's just one of those things, Matt, that I've seen so many people drunk, jumping on the bandwagon of, you know, I'm going to be a coach. And, and I, and, and there's so much coaching opportunities out, or coaching, um, I guess, opportunities for coaching products out there. I, I just finally said, you know what, I feel like I'm being a little bit selfish by not offering to do some coaching. So in order for it to fit for me, I had to do it in a group setting. So I'm doing some group coaching. I created a program called the Agent Success Academy. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the conversations like the don't freak out conversation that I had with my agents. And I do a deep dive on how you need to shift the dialogues in order to adapt to the new buyer and seller conversations so we can continue to keep our conversions where we want them to be. That would be an example of like, okay, this is what I'm coaching my agents. So then I'll use that and make that a part of the agent success Academy coaching. And I'm doing that on a weekly basis. No. So you, you can go to real estate sales solutions.com. Uh, you can go to real estate sales solutions, Facebook page, and check out my information on Agent Success, Success Academy. Love, Love to have anybody join. Awesome. Well, it's I'm I'm very glad that you're that you're finally doing it. Um, it's definitely not. Yeah, like I, I know you well enough. It's not it's not an ego play. It's not a money play. Uh, it's something no. that you've you've given a lot of thought to over the years, and uh, and I can see the incentive for for why you put out that content because I see the behind the scenes and I see I see the stuff you could be doing with your time other than this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I. Yeah, there's there's nobody there's nobody I would rather if I were active in the business there's nobody else that I would rather be coached under than you. Um, yeah. So that's that's all I have. To, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, real estate sales uh, sales solutions dot com, uh, and then for the podcast, make sure to go leave a review. Go to Apple Podcasts, leave a, a five star review. If there's a particular guest that you really liked, make sure to give them a shout out in that review. Uh, we read every single one. We appreciate every single one. They make a big difference, and they make sure that the uh, the show reaches more people. Right? That's yeah. that's really the, the big help. So if you want to help more agents, uh, obviously share it with your office, or share it with other agents. Just send them a link. Uh, but also just by leaving a review, you're helping put the show in front of more people where where we can get uh, get the message out. So. With that being said, man, thanks to you. As always, I appreciate yeah. your time. I know everybody else in the audience does, and, uh, and we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate you.